office. Um, Coach Sticker, Munster, Munster were able to convert most opportunities in your guys' red zone. They were able to play free-flowing rugby. Something I asked during the week was the impact of an out-and-out fetcher. Do you think you guys missed a fetcher tonight to slow the Munster ball at the breakdown? Uh, not really, Nathan. You know, uh, one thing we have to be honest about, you know, they played the conditions very well. You can see they're used to it. You know, not to say we're making excuse about it, you know. Um, I have to compliment them. Uh, you could see they're used to the conditions, you know. So uh, I, don't, I don't think it's got anything to do with us not having a, a specialist uh, feature, you know. It's just that uh, they had a plan and we knew if we're going to give them a, a soft entries in our, in our half, they will probably capitalize it. And uh, true, uh, the stats says it that they're very good when it comes to the line out attack, you know. So uh, we have to give credit to them. And uh, But once again, I must also say to my to my boys, you know, they kept on fighting until the end, you know. One or two calls maybe didn't go against us, if you, you look at also. Uh, Suleiman, you know, where he was close to score a try, went to do touch, that could have maybe changed a, a bit of a game in, in a game. And also <coughs> the, the driving modes that we had just before halftime, you know, I think that was the turning point of the game where it gave them energy, you know. If we converted that opportunity maybe into seven points, it could have been a different game. But once again, we don't want to make any excuses. We must give credit to Mans. Ashfaq? Hi, guys. Um, uh, uh, Stoker, um, just in terms of the uh, four dominance, there was good uh, scrum penalties and, and you won your lineups as well. But just from there, it seemed like there was quite a bit of kicking, um, especially from the halfbacks. I know you guys sometimes try and emulate the Springbok style of play, but uh, in a tour game like this, do you think the guys could have had a bit more of a go with ball in hand? Yeah, actually, I think our guys, they, they actually started by looking for opportunities first. They tried to play. <clears throat> It's just that if you see the errors that we've made, you know, it tells that, okay, a lot of our, a lot of our players, they've got a lot to learn when it comes to playing the conditions in the Northern Hemisphere. Uh, Master kicked well uh, in the first half. They've applied it, put the kicks behind us, and they've applied pressure on us so where we, we couldn't really attack from deep, you know. So uh, it's not like we, we didn't try, you know. Uh, but the, the game drivers, which is our nines and tens, they... The main thing for them was to put us in the right areas, but once again, we didn't execute that plan very well in the first half, as you saw, you know, and uh, we gave them soft, point, soft penalties with the, with the offsides, you know, and they got a 22-meter entry in our half, and they've capitalized from it. So that I think that was a, uh, the difference in the game, you know. If, uh, let's say, for example, we cut by one try, you know, or maybe we converted the try, the opportunity we had in the later in the first half, it could have been a different ball game, you know. So, but again, like I said, the boys, they came second half, they gave everything, set pieces like you saw, but it's just the way we're inconsistent. So I don't know if it but maybe it's from our side or maybe, I don't know, I'm not a, a really a scrum expert, you know, but there were a couple of times where I felt like we had dominance, but we didn't get rewarded, you know. So uh, it's a funny game. Certain things didn't go your way. And then, yeah, for but for Monster, I think we must give credit to them. Jan? Thank you, Zina. Uh, thank you, Thomas. Thank you, Muzandile. Uh, Muzandile, I think uh, we, we've heard this refrain now the whole year. You know, it's come through the Springbok team. We've had it uh, starting at the Wales series and then the rugby championships. Now, now we've still got it. We keep talking about not taking opportunities. Uh, it's like a trend that's going through all the national teams. Uh, and, and I know it sounds overly critical, but I mean, it doesn't seem to improve. Uh, when, when will this start improving that the teams actually start taking the opportunities and we don't sit in every press conference where we hear uh, it's just because we didn't take our opportunities, we didn't take our opportunities? I think, Jan, when you talk about the team that played today, you know, we're talking about the new team, you know, so if you want to if you wanna take the guys that missed the opportunities today to the Springbok team, I don't think it's fair for them, you know, because it was the first time them playing as a team, you know, so we can't we can't take them on something that was done by the other the main team, you know. So I don't think it's fair for the guys that play today because of, once again, if you look around, like Farsi, Henko Fenter, Suleiman, and Lero Nizas, it's the first time actually they're getting an opportunity. So it will be unfair to say, okay, they also falling in that trap, you know. Uh, today, the opportunities were there. If we converted the line out just before halftime, it could have been a different ball game, you know, where it's a seven point. 
and uh, Suleiman in the second half, just in touch, just before uh, when he had a chance to score a try, went to do touch. You know, so it is what it is. And 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 the, the game of sport, the game of rugby is all about opportunities. And that's exactly what Nasser did. They converted the, the, the opportunities. And that's exactly what we wanted to create. We wanted to create opportunities. And I'm just glad that the guy did create opportunities. But they, I hope all of us will learn from it, even the youngsters that also played today. They'll probably also learn from it. Yeah, I understand. Just as a follow-up, uh, I appreciate that this is a team that hasn't played together. Uh, but we're talking about uh, a general trend in South African rugby where the, uh, it almost seems like the skills level is not there to take those opportunities. Uh, you know, it's, it's not like the first time that the players have played in the rain. Maybe Thomas can answer here. You know, uh, how difficult is it to adjust or, or, or what seems to be the issue that we don't take these opportunities? Yeah, listen, Jan, I, I, I hear exactly what you're saying, um, but I think there's valid points going both ways. You know, this team were, was really thrown together. We had two days of worth of training um, and I think to get a certain level of um, you know cohesion with the team it, it does take time although like Coach Stalker said we're not making excuses for it um, there's just a feel in rugby um, and unfortunately when you when you look from the side or on TV you don't really understand that feel um, and that makes uh, it, it's it's difficult to explain but a team that plays together for a long period of time they start getting that cohesion and then they understand each other and they understand each other's uh, uh, positive points and negative uh, points. And um, then a team like Munster can capitalize on that because they know each other. They've been playing in the same system um, for, for years. And uh, some of these players have been, play been playing together for years. Um, so, you know, we're absolutely giving credit to Munster for, for that. Um, although we're not, we're not blaming it on anyone, we're taking it on the chin. Thank you very much, guys. Just Thanks, yeah. Thank you, Zina. Good evening, gentlemen. Good morning from South Africa. Uh, Coach Stoker, for you, just a quick one. Notably, yes, very little preparation time ahead of this Munster game. You now have some more time with the players and the, the bigger squad. Sort of what will be the learnings and the focus moving forward ahead of that Bristol game that you would look to to just bring to these bunch of players, young and old, um, you know, to to get onto that same page and, and hopefully just have an improved performance um, against uh, the Bristol side? I think one thing, the biggest learning for me uh, personally is that uh, when you play against the Northern Hemisphere team, territorial game is very important. You know, <laughs> if you don't play in the right areas, you know, you're going to get punished. And they're very, very good at, 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 at sensing the opportunity, you know where they, they, they capitalize from it. And uh, if you saw in the first half, I don't think one thing that I, I feel like we need to improve and as a team, uh, we think we need to, to kick in our terms, you know, because there were a couple of times we were supposed to get into the kicks, but we didn't really get into the kicks. Even at times when we did kick, you know, I, I think the execution wasn't really proper because of if you look at how uh, Monster counter attack from the, some of the kicks uh, in the first half where we didn't really apply pressure in the air, we didn't actually also apply pressure to tackle and they've managed to get line breaks from it, and we could see that they wanted to keep the ball alive there. I think they were they, they did very well in that sense. So once again, we had a plan, but we didn't really execute it very well. And I think also playing in the right areas also probably mm -hmm. is one thing in the first half that also let us down. Nathan? Uh, thank you again, Zina. Um, Coach, can you just comment on how the so-called bomb squad were able to turn things around in terms of energy and intent, especially the, the forwards on the bench, some positive uh, signs there. Yeah, you know what? Actually, after the game, that was one one of the main things that I, I give credit to the to the team. You know, they never stopped working. You know, even the guys that also started that also went all the way to finish the game. They kept on fighting. And but uh, once again, you've mentioned the guys that came off the bench. You know, they, they 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 really brought some massive energy. You know, if you look at how the amount of carries Kumuzo Nocho had, and also look at the the impact then with ball in hand. You know that he had. And uh, also a young lighty like uh, Andre Hochhofer, you know, kept on getting into a lot of battles, you know. And uh, we have to give credit to those boys. And uh, that's one thing that I enjoyed about today's game, you know. Even though we went on the right side of the scoring or scoreboard, but the boys they really did show that warrior mindset where they kept on fighting until the end. And uh, but once again, it was uh, <laughs> the, the the crowd, you know, it was crazy, you know. They really gave. Uh, their home team some energy you know and a lot of our youngsters probably they will learn from this and they'll actually understand what it means to come and play uh probably against 
one of the top side in the island, you know, and uh, sometimes we tend to forget about the opportunity that probably that the guys, if you look at Suleiman who was playing against Simon Zebo, someone who's got plenty of test matches and experience, you know, so those are the positive things that we can take from this game where a lot of our youngsters got to taste a bit of how to play against the top players, you know. Um, Apelele, a uh, nice try there. Uh, it seemed like when you guys did have an opportunity to have a go, uh, it was looking good. I know the conditions probably made handling a bit tough, but uh, do you take confidence from that going into next week's game that you guys can even have more of a go? Yeah, definitely. I think there's a lot that we can uh, build on. Um, I think like what Thomas um, said, um, just having that cohesion in the team, I think going to next week, um, that's one thing that we obviously have to build on and yeah, I think just we can take a lot of confidence out of this team. Uh, like Coach Stick said, um, I think the boys, uh, we, we fought until the end. And I think our attack was um, was going forward when we were on the front foot. Um, and just oh, quickly, nice. Thomas, um, just in terms of the scrums, you guys got good penalties in and the lineouts uh, functioned well. But as Coach uh, Stoker said, the, those few moves just before off time, uh, what do you think was the issue there that you guys just couldn't convert? Yeah, um, you're 100 right. I think we did get uh, a lot of reward, um, but but it didn't get rewarded in tries. Um, you know, especially that last one. Um, I think it was uh, again. It's 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 probably the amount of time that you know some of the guys have played together. You know, Pepsi was ripping that ball, and and Joseph Dweber was um, receiving it from him. And and you know, if you think about the amount of times that they've done that, and you compare it to the uh, amount that you know the Munster guys have done it then, um, you know, it's obviously significantly less. So um, we're obviously building on that. And I think our scrums and our malls went very well tonight. So, you know, it's it's definitely an area where we will improve in next week and um, a definitely an area that we will target to improve. Thanks, thanks Ina. How's it, guys? Um, Stoker, you've spoken about the uh, lack of cohesion, you know, from the short period that you've had with the guys. Now with a week to the Bristol game, um, and a bit of better preparation time there. Uh, will you look to stick with sort of most of the same team that did business this week? Or do you think you'll make a few changes to give more of a guys a run next week? What do you think uh, you, your plan is there? I don't think, Ross, we've got a luxury of making a lot of changes. You know, if you look at our squad, we've got about 26 <laughs> players. You know, 20, actually 25 players in our squad currently. So, yes, I would love to give the other guys also an opportunity, you know, because of that is, I feel like, these two games for me, it's a, it's a, uh, for us as a team, you know, it's all about giving guys opportunities to 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 show what they can do. So you, I don't think it would be fair uh, for us as coaches not to maybe uh, give the other guys the opportunity, you know. So, but once again, uh, we're not uh, uh, promising anyone <clears throat> for 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 game time. So we'll probably just have to go and review the game and see where we can maybe uh, pick things around. But once again. Uh, I don't think there's a lot to change in our team because of once again, like I said, if the guys can keep on fighting until the, the last minute of the game, you know, and uh, uh, that is one thing that was positive about the game, you know, where they kept on fighting. So I wouldn't <clears throat> fault out them with that, you know. So, but yeah, as a coaching staff, we'll go down and see again. We'll sit down and see where we can improve, you know, uh, and no doubt at all that maybe. Yeah, next week it will get better, you know, because of at least now the guys also, they understand the conditions. And like I said earlier on, I think the main thing is to write, make sure that firstly, play in the right areas. And then that's where we can at least start to play some good rugby.